Hey guys, so today I'm going to do a little analysis on my actual PG&E bill that I have since I've had this EV. So if you're interested in this type of data, stay tuned. So I wanted to show you this little graph that I have today just because uh, I was doing some analysis on my EV rates and you know what kind of usage I'm getting and how much less it's costing me to actually have an EV. And so basically these are my actual these are some of my actual numbers from PG&E, my, my utility company. And so basically what happens is uh sorry this I know this little sheet is kind of all over the place but I try to make it as nice as possible. So basically before you have an EV, normally, if you're a customer, you get a flat rate, which is this column here. And the flat rate for tier one, which is basically the lowest tier, that's the tier one because we don't really use that much power or electricity. And so that rate is 21 and a half cents a kilowatt. And like I said, it's a flat rate. So basically it's the same price any hour of the day. Now, basically what happens is when you tell PG&E, hey, I have an EV, can you give me a better rate? They go, yeah, sure, we're, we'll put you on an EV plan. And so what that is, is it's a time of use plan, which is this one. And so basically what they do is they they shift your rate kind of. And so what they do is they basically give you more of a rate that's closer to actual charges. So this is kind of closer to the actual charges that PG&E is actually paying for the power. And so what they do is they have it in these, it's called time of rate. And basically it's, they give you different rates at different times. So the orange is going to be off peak. And so that's 11, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. And so basically that rate at that time is 13 cents a kilowatt. And then they have what's called partial peak, which is the greens. So that's 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. That's 21 cents. And then peak time, which is obviously when most people are home and using energy, is 2 to 9 p.m. And that's 34 cents a kilowatt. And so what I was thinking right off the bat was, hey, that's kind of not fair because basically now the only difference is first I'm using more energy because as you can see here, I'm charging my car and that's at a certain rate. But the only real difference besides that is basically now you're charging me more for peak hours, whereas before it was 21 cents. Now I have to pay 34. So that's I felt like that's kind of not fair. But then when you dig into it some more, it does make sense to do it this way where they give you a better rate overnight and, and close to you know, to their actual rates, and it's actually cheaper that way. So if we go through this, um, so I've got the EV cost, the old flat rate, and this is time. So hopefully you guys can read military time. So 12, 1, 2, 2 p.m., 3 p.m., stuff like that. And so I have three separate days, the 10th, the 15th, and the 18th of January that I kind of just looked at. And so if we were to use my actual rates that are the actual, so basically I have the actual cost here. This is the actual cost that PG&E charged me per hour, you know, for the time. And so, you know, 12 a.m. cost me, I, we use 90.92 kilowatts, so that's 12 cents. And then at 1 a.m. we use 0.1 kilowatts, so that's 1 cent, blah, blah, blah. So if you look at this as of right now, because we have an EV, EV and we're charging, so if you see down here at, what time is this, 11 p.m., I use almost 4 kilowatts energy, so that's obviously me charging the car. And so I cost 50 cents. And so while I was a little bit pissed in the beginning is because it's like, hey, I'm giving you more business, but you're not really, I feel like you're not really giving me a better rate. You know, I'm giving you more business and you guys are ripping me off kind of because you're charging me more during peak hours. And so it's kind of not the case now that I look at it because basically, okay, so I'm on this EV rate plan, right? And my actual cost with charging the EV was $2.88 that day. And so if we compare that to the flat rate, it would have cost me two ninety seven if I just had twenty two cent for twenty twenty one and a half cents for every hour of the day. So it would cost me two dollars and ninety seven cents. That's actually more expensive. So it makes sense for me to be on this EV plan because I'm getting an overall cheaper rate. And so my kind of thought process before where it's like, hey, you're ripping me off is let's say I didn't charge you know, I didn't have an and I didn't charge. You take that out. Now my actual cost with the EV rate plan is two two thirty seven, and the flat rate is two twelve. So if I didn't have an EV, it makes more sense for me to not be on the EV plan, and I couldn't be on the EV plan because I don't have an EV, right? So it makes sense that <clears throat> if you have an EV, you should be on the EV rate where the 
the rates are different per hour when usage isn't as high because that way you can save money uh, charging your, your car overnight at the cheapest rate. And so, you know, for comparison, I, I'm getting 13 cents for my actual bill for my, for my company, but if you go to a supercharger and you don't have free supercharging, right now it's 28 cents now a kilowatt. So I'm getting over over half, you know, back. It's half cheaper, over half cheaper than uh, supercharging. And I can trickle charge, which is better too. It's not doesn't degrade the battery as much, sorry. And so one thing that would be nice is, since I am giving PG&E more business, it would be nice if my overnight rate was cheaper, a little bit cheaper, but, you know, it is what it is. I can't really change that. And 13 cents a, a kilowatt is still a pretty good price. And the reason why I think they're not, they don't give you a better rate uh, for an EV plan, they just give you a kind of a shifted rate, is because I also got an $800 rebate for having an EV, an EV from PG&E, so it's... <laughs> They, I'm basically paying myself back in a sense, but then it's like they got to make up all that money they're giving out for these rebates. So that's probably another reason why they're not, why they don't give you an actual better rate. They just shift your, your, your usage, your money usage around basically. So, but as you can see, it is definitely cheaper to have to charge, you know, overnight when you get the cheapest rate. So you look at this example here on the, on the right. I took basically one of my days where I charged, I used 12 and a half, almost a little more than 12 and a half kilowatts of energy. That cost me a dollar sixty-two, and if you convert that to miles, my car for the way I drive right now is about four and a half a kilowatt, four and a half miles a kilowatt. Um, I have another video coming up where basically I'll show you more data on you know my actual driving and what kind of efficiency I'm getting. But anyway, so if we just use four and a half as a baseline, you multiply if you figure that do the whole 12, by twelve and a half kilowatts, so that's like getting 50, 57 miles for that type of usage. So if we convert that to over to a kind of a gas rate, so right now around this area, it's about 359 for a gallon of gas. And my Civic gets about 35 miles a gallon because it's kind of old now. So if we divide 50, 57 by 35, that's 163%. So basically it's, you know, obviously over a gallon. If we convert that into price, uh, it's basically like one and a half gallons. It costs me 584. It would cost me 584 to go basically 57 miles. So that's quite a bit of quite a big saving. So that's four dollars and twenty-two cents in savings. Um, and you could the my little mindset behind doing this fifty-seven miles is like that's kind of a standard commute, not maybe a standard, but a very typical commute for somebody. You know, for fifty-seven miles back and forth to work each day. So basically, if you were to use that as your, your example, you're saving four four dollars and twenty-two cents a day, and that's you multiply that by twenty days, which is like you know four four full work weeks. You're saving $84 a month. So that's a pretty good savings just per month. And, you know, obviously that, it also depends how much you drive. Maybe you drive more to work every day, or you can also include weekends when you're using the car as well, because that, you know, is also going to count. So you could be saving $84 or even more per month by having an EV, you know, and saving on gas. So it's a pretty good, pretty good amount of money you're saving just by switching your car pretty much. So does this analysis make getting an EV car easier for you, seeing all the savings that I've kind of shown you here? Would you like to see the utility company give you an actual better rate as an EV owner rather than just shifting your rates around? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.